Hi everyone. Okay, it's been a minute since I've gone live on my YouTube channel. So thank you for bearing with me. I'm a couple minutes late. Um, okay, I'm trying to see. Okay, we have some of you are already here. Will you say hi to me in the chat so I know who's here? Welcome. I'm so excited. It looks like it's working, but I would love for you guys to say hi to me in the chat. So that might be below this video. Carolina's here. Okay, I see. I see the chat. Just going to get situated. It's so funny. I do lives all the time for you all, but never on my YouTube channel. So it's like a little bit nerve wracking. <laughs> and yeah, I'm so excited we're here. Tell me how you're feeling. Tell me in the chat what you're most excited for. Like, why are you here? What drew you to this topic? Um, and just to introduce the topic, today's free live masterclass is all about ditching the dating rules, which I'm so excited about for all of you, so you can attract your fairy tale romance. Send me a one in the chat if you're excited. <laughs> I'm going to exit out of some things that were on my screen so we're not distracted. Here we go. So yeah, share with me in the comments why you're here. What are you excited about? What drew you in to this topic? Here we go. I'll give you guys a minute. I'm going to give everyone some time to hop on because I know I was like four minutes late. And I'm pulling my notes up. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, everybody. So excited. Okay. Let's get this going. So in this Ditch the Dating Rules Masterclass, hi, Christy. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Carolina. Yay. So in this Ditch the Dating Rules Masterclass, I'm Chelsea Rose. In case you're new here, I am a love and success coach for driven women. In this masterclass, I'm going to be sharing how traditional dating advice is potentially sabotaging your dream romance from falling into place, from you attracting it easily into your life. And oh my God, I have so much to say about all this. So that's what we're going to explore today. Number one, I'm also going to share with you the only question in other words, the most important question you need to ask yourself as you're dating in order to guide your steps so you can fall into the arms of your true love. And the third point we're going to be talking about is the true feminine energy traits that hook him and make him fall in love with you. And it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Okay. So those are the three points I'm going to be diving into today. And thank you all for being here. I know this is new. We're changing it up. I'm going to start going live more often on my YouTube channel so that I can connect with more of you amazing women in the world. Um, and shout out to everyone who's listening to this on my podcast. I believe I'm going to end up posting this there too. And we're all together in spirit. I love you all so much. Okay. Kelly says, love the idea of tossing the rules out. Yes. Kelly, tell me why. What, like, what does the rules do to you? Like, what do the rules do to you? How does it kind of get in the way for you? Anne says, I want to learn the secrets to finding a loving relationship like yours. I heard your amazing story. Oh my God, that's going to make me cry. You know, that's a huge motivation for this topic because for those of you who know my story and I'll mention, I'll, I'll briefly summarize it here because it is a long, beautiful story. And I will write a book someday with all the details for you. Um, thinking about that a lot. But uh, so I didn't follow any traditional dating advice and I attracted my soulmate. I'm so in love. We're so in love. We're so happy we've been together. It'll in July, it'll be nine years together. And this past March, we just celebrated our eight year wedding anniversary. And if you do the math, you'll see, <laughs> speaking of uh, ditching all traditional dating rules and advice, we got married pretty quickly uh, after we got into a committed relationship. I did everything quote unquote wrong. I literally did everything wrong. And so I'm going to be sharing a little bit throughout today's class about what I did do right. And to me, you know, this path isn't for everyone. If you're someone who's like, no, just give me a linear path with like 
10 steps and I want to just do those 10 steps and like find my man on the apps or I want to find my man through a matchmaker and do these 10 steps. Like if you really love rules and steps and things like that, then I'm obviously not your coach. But if you're a spiritual woman, if you're a spiritual woman, you have like a deep, rich inner life and you are sensitive, you have, you know, you have a strong intuition, whether or not you've always listened to it. Okay. And you know, you're a rule breaker. Like you don't like following rules. You don't like this idea of having to follow these steps because it feels really unromantic and like it sucks the joy out of the whole mystery and the whole romantic, you know, fairy tale love story that you want to manifest. If you're that woman who is more spiritual, you're more feeling based, you want to, you want the freedom to trust yourself and to get out of your head because that is what the the dating rules often do to women is they get you guys so stuck in your heads. And then this is why I'm so sick of it. I'm so over it. (laughs) And I've always been like, I've always taught this message, but now I'm just saying it more boldly. And I'm really excited about that. Um, But what happens when you start learning these rules, right? You're coming from great intentions, obviously. Anyone who shows up to a video or shows up to a a course to learn how to attract their love, their dream love, you know, relationship, there's great intentions behind that. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's off or that's wrong, but what typically happens is you get so in your head, trying to memorize the rules, trying to memorize the scripts, trying to learn all the things that you detach from your most vital, important asset of all. That is your intuition. That is your freaking intuition. Not only that, is then women also will, will end up censoring their self expression and thinking, oh, this part of me is feminine enough. This part of me is feminine. So I'll share that part of me with him. But this part of me is not feminine. So I'm going to hide these parts of myself on the date so that I can hook him and make him fall in love with me. Like, no, 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 no. That is a misunderstanding of feminine energy. True feminine energy, and I'm kind of just diving right in, but we'll break all the, these things apart and go more into depth. True feminine energy is you being fully seen for all parts of you. This should come as a massive relief, right? True feminine magnetism is when you share and express all parts of yourself. The dark, the light, the polished, the messy, the strong, the vulnerable. This This is what makes you an irresistible woman to your king, to your true love soulmate partner. You are perfectly made for your person. You are perfectly made for your person. I'm going to say it again. You are perfectly made for your person. Okay. So again, beautiful intentions, studying all these like dating advice, studying all the rules. It's beautifully intentioned. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. You're here because you want to learn right? You're here because you want to learn, but I want to be the polarizing teacher. (laughs) I want to be the dating coach that has you go, wait, what? What'd she just say? Wait, I thought I was supposed to do this, this, and this. And she's saying like, throw all that shit out the window and instead be myself, own who you are. Stop trying to be perfect. These are all my pillars that I deeply, deeply, deeply swear by and stand by that I embodied that allowed me to attract my man and get married within nine months of getting into a relationship with him. And again, we've been married for eight years together for nine, nine, almost. Yay. So you get to be yourself. I wasn't perfectly healed when Greg and I met. And when we got into a relationship, I had a lot of healing to left to do. And I had a lot of um, insecurity still. And I was like, hadn't, I was dreaming about starting this business. I hadn't started it yet. That was a messy ride. Some of you know. <laughs> so I, it's like, I wasn't super successful. I wasn't as fit as I am now. I've had a lot of insecurities in my body. I was emotionally eating at times. I felt out of shape, but he loved me and thought I was beautiful. And I was, I am, you've always been beautiful. I know I've always been beautiful, but I'm trying to paint the picture of like, I was just so myself. I was not trying to be anyone other than I am. And I wasn't playing any games and I had an open heart and I let him see me and feel me. And I trust, I chose to trust him. 
because that's what my intuition was telling me. So these are the steps to ditching any kind of like dating rule mentality and also ditching the linear path to love. Uh, We're not here for the linear path to love. We're here for the spiritual path to love. We're here for the magical path to love. We're here for the romantic path to love. Send me a one in the chat if this is resonating. So if you want like the beautiful, big romance, like I met Greg in the South of France in the middle of nowhere, which I think a lot of people, and this was me too. I didn't realize that there was a whole like very rural part of France. I had never been, but when I think of the South of France, I'm thinking of like Nice and like the popular spots to go. No, I met him in like the woods (laughs) in a tiny, tiny, tiny town. They call it a village of just over a hundred people. This is where I met my man, which he, oh, I love your comments, you guys. He is from Paris, which is a huge city, right? And he had moved to the middle of nowhere six months before I got there. And Everyone thought he was insane. So he also trusted his intuition. And then there I was. I just landed in the middle of nowhere. Um, I was doing a, not an exchange program, but I was traveling. I was finding the cheapest ways to travel, me and a a girlfriend of mine. And we were um, working on an organic farm for room and board. And he was working on like the construction stuff that was happening there. And so we, we met because we were working for the same um, really sweet German farmer man. <laughs> okay. That's the snapshot of what happened. So talk about like, so, 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 so romantic. Okay. So that is where we met. So if I had tried to follow a linear path to love, um, and put all these rules and restrictions on me, our story would, I literally would have blocked our love story from unfolding. If I had sat there and read all the dating advice and all the books and they all told me like, you got to be together for this amount of time before you sleep together and you got to do this, this, and this, and don't live together until you're engaged and don't get married until this. And like, if I had done all of that, our, our journey could have been sabotaged or would have unfolded in a very different way. And I'm so grateful for how it did unfold because it was like zero to a hundred. And that's how I like to roll. Like I, before Greg and I were reunited because we had met and then long story short, I had to come back to the U S and then we were reunited a couple of years later. And that's when our relationship started, but we did not talk a lot in the two years apart. So I call it as like our relationship started when I reunited with him. But anyways, um, I was getting back to a point. I'm trying to be concise here, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. My nonlinear way of explaining it. Um, Okay. So, you know, we had met this magical experience connected in a romantic way. We're intimate together. I had no idea he was my husband, although deep down I did, but then I didn't see him for two years. And then I knew I was going to go back to France and I knew I'd see him, but that wasn't my priority. I wasn't like, go to France and find your husband. No, but I did tell my friend, a couple months before Greg and I did get reunited, I said, the next man that I date is going to be the man I marry. I want the next man that I date to be the man that I spend the rest of my 20s with, the man that I'm ultimately, ultimately going to marry. I didn't know that I would literally be married nine months after saying that out loud. Literally. So the next man I dated, you could call it dating, but really we fell into a relationship and never looked back. But the next man I dated was the man that I married. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. You don't need to follow a linear path to love. This is what you do need to do though. You need to obviously claim what you want. And I've done a lot of trainings on that, but that means identify what your desire is and claim it. Like declare to the world, to life, to yourself, like, this is what I'm having. I'm Here's the menu and I'm ordering this off the menu and it's done. It's a done deal. Okay. That's what it means to claim what you want. You do have to claim what you want. And then you have to open your heart, be willing to receive it. Right. And then you have to share, shine your light, like bold, boldly be all of you share all parts of yourself. Don't withhold, don't play games. Don't try to be coy. Don't try to be cool. Just be yourself. That genuinely is enough. I promise you it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. You are perfectly made for your person. That's your new mantra. I want you guys to all type that out in the comments and declare it. I am perfectly made for my person. Okay. 
So while you're typing that, I'm going to go just breeze through these other parts of it. <clears throat> so you're, you're not withholding any parts of yourself. You are open hearted. You are shining your light. You are embracing who you are and you're expressing that as you date, as you go about your life, right? You're, you're not trying to fit into a box. You're not trying to sense yourself. You're not trying to be cool. Yes, Kelly. Yay. And Charlotte and Chantal. I love these comments. And we have a bunch more women who are here live with us. Welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks for joining me. Um, and I'm just going to scroll up really quick because there's some really cool comments I wanted to read. Um, Kelly says it. the, the dating rules would, would stifle her, make her feel like everyone's the same and we aren't, we aren't all cookie cutter women. And I want this to be aligned with me. Yes. Alignment. Joe says, I want to embody, I, I want to, um, yeah, not embody the rules I want to, um, or the rules are exhausting for me right now. Yes. And then Kelly says the steps make me feel cold. So I'm in the right place. Good. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. I wanted to hear what the steps do for you. Um, yay. Okay, cool. Very cool. So I had shared what the steps really are about, and there were a couple more. So you're going to be yourself. That means being vulnerable. That means being authentic. Truly. That part is easier said than done. It's truly easier said than done. And I had never done that with anyone else other than Greg, my husband. I had never truly been myself with anyone else. And my relationships were really inauthentic. Although I did feel like I loved these other men that I was with, they gen oh, generally, they were inauthentic though, because I was never allowing myself to be fully seen. And therefore I was attracting unavailable men men who could not meet me on all levels, men that were not emotionally available, men that didn't want the kind of level of commitment and intimacy that I wanted. And then when I let that go, and for me, like traveling and being in this magical place and just letting go of everything in my life in that moment where Greg and I met, it really fostered this environment where I just was in a deep surrender. I was so open. I was so surrendered. I was, and then the next step is I was living my best life. I was following my joy. I was following my intuition. And then as our journey unfolded from there, from the moment we met to the moment we ended up getting married and all of that, which was over the next two years, I listened to my intuition every single step of the way. All those qualifying questions you're supposed to ask a man before you like get into a committed relationship. I asked Greg at the beginning of our relationship, but I wasn't like following a script. I was just like, what do I want to know? What's important to me? What do I need to know that we're aligned on? You know? And I remember at the time I was really into yoga. I had just done it like a year long yoga teacher training. And I was really into spirituality and which I obviously I'm still very spiritual, but at that time it was like the yogi path that I was on. And I was like meditating every day and I was really strict about it. And I was like, you know, before Greg and I got together, I was like, I need a guy who does yoga and meditates every day. That's what I thought I wanted, what I thought I needed. And then I had some conversations with Greg just to see like, what are your beliefs? And like, you know, if we had kids someday, like what would we be teaching our kids? And I realized that through those conversations with him, I got clear on what I genuinely, genuinely needed in a man. And he filled that. And then I realized through those conversations that I didn't need his spirituality to look identical to mine. And I let go of like those inauthentic rules or like, um, barriers I was putting on what I needed, you know, and it's actually so much sexier to not be identical to your partner and to not do all the same stuff together. And at that time I didn't know that yet. So I was like, no, I need a man who like does yoga with me and we meditate every day. And like, we have the same path. And I'm so grateful that that's not what I attracted because that typically um, relationships like that, where it's very like buddy, buddy, we're the same. We do everything together. will lose polarity and lose attraction over time. Side note, totally different, different topic, but I wanted to just share personally, like, how I sort of timeline hopped over all of the um, dating roles that were that were taught of like, you must date casually for 90 days before exclusivity and you must date 10 other guys at the same time. I didn't do any of that. And I'm not saying that those dating rules don't have their place at times. I'm not saying that they're all BS, 
But what I don't like is when people put the power in those rules and forget what the rules do. So those rules of like, take your time, get to know him, like uh, make sure that he wants a relationship too before you sleep together, all those things. It's not about the rules. It's about what the rules are trying to achieve, which when you are a spiritual woman and you're deeply connected to your intuition, you achieve what the rules are trying to achieve. You achieve it anyways through listening to your own inner authority. And that's what I did. And I'm so grateful that I was so connected to what I wanted and I was so connected to my gut and I knew what felt right and I knew what didn't feel right. And everything went so quickly with Greg and I because everything was so right. And that's the thing is like, I think we've all heard these magical stories. They happen more often, like more often, I think, than we like to believe where people get married right away or like they were like consciously trying to manifest their soulmate and then they meet and they're married within three months and they're happily ever after. There are stories like this and you can be a woman who manifests that. You can be a woman who manifests true love in a magical nonlinear way where it moves really quickly. You know, I, if I, if 22 year old me can manifest her husband <laughs> in this magical way, like you can do it. You guys are way more mature than I was at the time. I would probably guarantee you have more life experience than I had at the time. And you actually probably know what you want more than I did at the time. So I want you guys to, my, my whole message right now is really about getting you connected to the place inside of you where you hear your intuition and I want to inspire you to have the courage to listen to it and follow it and trust yourself. Trust yourself. So tell me what's coming up for you in the comments now. Tell me, tell me what's coming up for you as I say all of this, because I am streaming. <laughs> like I just went off script. This is all what I wanted to say, but it's coming out in a more organic way, which is better than me looking at my notes anyways. But I want to pause and see what's resonating, what's coming through, what light bulb moments are you having? Anything you want to share? Tell me in the chat. Yay, we have more and more women joining me live. Awesome. Awesome. So exciting. Um, and while you guys are typing, I have a feeling several of you are typing comments. I can't wait to see them. I want to share some of you who, if you're on my email list, you might've already heard this announcement, but I have created a brand new six week live course where I guide you deeply into mastering these principles. The course is called irresistible and it's all about you shedding the rules and the stories and the limiting beliefs that tell you that you need to follow some cookie cutter path or the rules that say, oh, you need to be more healed before you can attract him or the rules that tell you to censor parts of yourself in order to hook this man. We're surrendering all of that BS and getting you to stand confidently in who you are and flex this muscle of trusting yourself and expressing all of you as you date. So Irresistible is my new six-week live course. So I will be recording it live with you on Zoom. I'll be able to see you. And it'll be this beautiful, incredible, connected community of women who are ditching the dating rules. They're ditching the linear path to love and instead choosing to open their hearts to manifest their fairy tale romance. So everyone who was drawn to this masterclass, like this course is really designed for you. And I have a special pre-sale price available right now. It's going to expire soon. Um, I just put the link in the, in the comments for you to check it out and save your spot. Um, and then also if you're watching the recording, it, the link uh, to join is in the description of this video. If you're listening to this on my podcast, it's in the show notes. Okay. So you, all for all the places we've accounted for all the places now. Um, so irresistible, I decided I wanted to create this experience that was live because I want to feel your energy. I want to witness your transformation. I want the live support, the live accountability. I want the group energy, all these things that are just so 
valuable to me. And I, you know, I've been coaching for eight years now, and these are some of my favorite components. It's very, very special to be held through a live program with other women and to go through it together. So I wanted all these components and I wanted a course that embodied everything that I stand for, for women who are single and they're ready to attract their fairy tale romance love story. And they want to do it by following their intuition. They want to do it by feeling empowered. They want to do it by understanding how to be truly in their feminine energy, which I'll share more about. And they want to do it in a way that's fun. That is who this course is for. It's it's like, again, also eight years of me teaching this, embodying this, practicing this. And I wanted to create a course that hit every single important part of the equation and put you in an immersive experience where you catapult into your dream love story. Like that is what I want for this. Um, that's what I want for you. That's what I want this experience to be. That's what it's going to be. And so, um, I haven't created a full blown sales page for this course yet. It's there's special pre-sale pricing right now. So click the link in the chat or click the link below in the description, um, to get in while the price is at the lowest it will ever be. Um, and that is time sensitive too. And you'll see the dates on there. I don't want to say any dates right now, just because I know this video is going to live on and I don't want to confuse anybody. So, um, you can go ahead and click the link to get all the details and to save your spot. I can't wait to support you. We already have women who have saved their spot and I'm really excited to have you all. So I'm going to read these comments down. Chantal says, I feel that leaning into my intu intuition and letting go of my list of have to and being open to the right man. Good. She says, I feel that. Okay, cool. Yes, this is what I want for you all. Kelly says, to be honest, I always felt really sad when I used to hear about the rules, et cetera, because they really felt awful sometimes and against what my heart was saying. Wow. I can trust my own inner authority. That's another mantra for you all. I can trust my own inner authority. Uh, Joe says, learning to feel and open my heart seems impossible sometimes. I feel stuff everywhere when I'm triggered and I can't control how it comes out. Um, I feel you, I feel you. And, you know, we get to take our time with these, with these things. Um, but you're doing the work that is most important, Joe. I just want to reflect that back to you. Anne says, instead to put focus on the outside, instead give focus and listen to your inside. Beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's, I understand why women come to coaches or dating coaches and they come to traditional dating advice from this place of like, just tell me what to do. If you're someone who used to feel the need um, to have someone tell you the exact steps to take and you felt kind of like you couldn't trust yourself, I want to validate that. I feel like where that's coming from is because you've been hurt. You've been through heartbreak. You've been through loss in your love life. And you from that place of like woundedness and from that place of fear of like, I don't want to repeat this. You innocently come to these, to, to the traditional dating advice or lots of different dating advice. I feel like there's a lot of noise out there and you're doing that because you don't want to get hurt again. You're do you, you've done that because you wanted to prevent making the same mistakes and there's nothing wrong with that intention. Of course, it's a powerful, beautiful intention, but the issue with that is I think that this is what I want you guys to rewrite your story. If you have been through any kind of significant loss or heartbreak or pain, or maybe you've consistently gone for or attracted the unavailable man, or maybe you have been cheated on by a man or multiple men, like maybe you've had some kind of recurring pattern that has brought you to work like this, to this work on your love life. I want you to, to shift your story by recognizing that in each of those instances, and this is what I hear from so many women, in each of those instances, there was a voice, there was a nudge, there was a feeling you had that something was off. Send me a one in the chat if this resonates. You knew he wasn't your guy or you knew that there was something off and you just stayed. You stayed for, for whatever reason you stayed, for whatever reason you ignored the voice. You ignored the feeling. You didn't know how to trust yourself. You didn't want to lose this man. So you overrode your own truth. Tell me a one in the chat. I mean, that's me. That's me with my relationships before Greg. I knew that something was off. I knew I didn't have to try so hard. I knew that 
that this wasn't, it wasn't it. It wasn't right for me. Right. So tell me one in the chat, in the, in the live chat right now, if you relate to that. So if that's true, I'm just giving you such a big hug, but there's something so empowering about this. There's something so empowering about this, about seeing your story differently rather than, oh God, if I had just followed the dating steps, I wouldn't have gone through that experience. No, no, no. If you had just followed your intuition, if you had just listened to your feelings, if you had trusted yourself, that, that's the lesson. And there's no self beat up allowed in this space. It's not about that, but I am bringing up the past to help create a more empowering story for you because that's how I see all of you. I see all of you as actually so intuitive and so grounded in how you really feel. And now when women come to me, so all of you here, by the time you find your coach like me, which obviously, you know, There's only one of me, but by the time you guys end up in my world, you're someone who's really, really ready to be like, I'm a grown ass woman and I know what I want. And I know what my intuition sounds like. I know what my gut feelings feel like. And all I need is for someone to help reinforce my own self-trust. All I need is for someone to give me the permission slip, write me a permission slip that says, okay, Joanne, I get to be all of me, right? Okay, Chantal, I get to be all of me on the date, on my dates. I get to be all of me in life. And Charlotte, I get to express my sensitivity, my vulnerability, and my quirkiness and my playfulness and my silliness. I get to, I get to share and embrace all parts of me and trust and know that I am ready for love now i'm ready for love and i am more than enough for my dream man and my dream relationship the truth is you guys you have everything you need already within you to succeed in love you have everything you need find me another love coach who's saying that online to you and i will befriend them <laughs> how rare is it to have someone say that to you And it's really like making me emotional. Um, That's why I'm here. That's why I'm your coach. That's why I'm here. And that's why I'm your coach. And that's why I've created this masterclass. That's why I create my content. But more specifically, that's why I've created Irresistible as just a place to be in this energy and to be held and supported and to have me as your cheerleader fanning your flames and guiding your helping guide your steps but the steps are uniquely yours the steps are coming from your guidance your intuition your power and i'm here reflecting that and amplifying that and lifting that up and celebrating it so inside irresistible because so it's one um training per week those are on zoom but it's in a group format. So I'll be sharing the lesson with you, guiding you through an experience, and then you'll get to ask me questions and we'll get to talk and I'll get to give you my feedback and coaching and support you in building that self-trust, support you in navigating whatever's coming up for you in your love life. And as you date, um, and this is for the woman who's ready for the fast track, right? Like I see these six weeks as speeding up the timeline, like speeding up the timeline. The woman who is the women who are ready to, sorry, my throat is a little raspy. The women who are ready to attract their true love now. That's who, that's what irresistible's for. That's who it's for. So I can't wait to have you. If you feel called, I'm going to check my notes and see what else I wanted to share with you today. So this is how I, I talked about how traditional dating advice is sabotaging your fairy tale romance. And that is because it gets you in your head. It makes you doubt yourself and you can detach on accident. You can detach from your own inner guidance, which is the most important thing of all. And then also you start to censor parts of your self-expression, but it's your raw, authentic expression. That is your feminine magnetism. That is it. That is it. It's not just be smiley and bubbly and like mysterious. That's not true feminine energy. That could be one part of it, but that's a slice of the pie. True feminine magnetism is you being all of you without needing anything back, without needing reassurance from him that you're lovable, but just genuinely being your full self. 
that is what your man craves. That is what he will fall in love with. So the next thing is the only question you need to ask yourself. So whenever women ask me, okay, this is what this man texted me. What should I say? Or this man invited me um, on this type of date. How do you think I should respond? Or so like the women who work with me and they join my offerings, like these are the type of questions I get is they'll share a specific thing happening and they'll be like, what's the right way to respond to this? Or um, how should I, like, should I say yes or no to this invitation? Like, what should I do? So, and then should I, like, he wants to have sex. Should I have sex with him? Yes or no. Or like, he wants this. What should I say? What should I do? Like any question, I'm trying to think of more specific examples, but you get when I'm, when I'm, where I'm going with this, any question you have, anything you must need to decide, anything you must need to, to, um, take action on and respond to in your love life, the way that you will find the right path for you is by answering this question, okay? This is the one question I want you to ask yourself and then answer it and follow it. And that is, what feels good to me? What feels good to me? Put this question in your back pocket. Keep it forever. And that is just a great question to live life by. Like, ongoing, even once you're in your dream marriage, like that is my, one of my favorite questions to come from this feminine wisdom that we're talking about, come from your intuition, come from your inner power and authority. Any, any situation that arises in your love life, ask this question, what feels good to me and trust yourself. It doesn't effing matter what I say or what the other coach says or what the other dating expert says, it truly doesn't matter. That is what matters. You guys, that is what matters. And I had a lot of people who thought I was crazy when Greg and I got together. I remember talking to one of my, you know, bless her heart. I love her. But one of my college friends, who's like very logical, very linear, very, um, trepidatious. Is that the word? Like, I take a lot of risks. I'm bold. I follow my own path. And I remember telling my friend, this friend who's not like that, or at, at the time wasn't like that. Like, I'm, you know, I'm getting, I'm going to get married. Like Greg and I, I think we're going to get married right away. Like this is what's happening. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and so when you follow this path, you follow this path of what feels good to me. There's going to be people who judge you. There's going to be people who don't get it. Don't look for outside validation. Don't look for outside validation. It hurts when we do that. In the early stages of mastering this, it hurts. Then once you deeply trust yourself, it could just like at this point, that doesn't bother me anymore. But at the moment I was like, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> She's definitely judging me. But that's okay. Um, but now it's just like, oh, like, of course, it's not going to make sense to anyone else because they're not you. They're not you. So what feels good to me? What feels good to me? What do I want? That's another version, right? What do I want? What feels good to me? Stop looking outside yourself. And if you're someone who has ignored this part of you, or you have not been in the practice of going in and feeling, then give, give yourself grace and patience as you make the reconnection with yourself. And I think we all have our own way of discovering what feels good to me. So I'm a big fan of like giving myself time to process and even going on like a long walk as I mull it over, like something physical, like moving my body helps me digest and like digest the, the situation, so to speak. Um, not literal digestion, but that helps too. But I mean, like digest, process my emotions and come to clarity. Also, sometimes when I just talk it out without asking for advice, but I have people in my life who I have, I, there's a safe space for me to just like talk something out without their advice. Or at least I can say, I'm not, I'm not ready for advice yet, but I would love for you just to listen as I organize my thoughts out loud. So those are my go-to and also journaling, like just free writing, like all my thoughts. So 
sometimes, and this is what we'll go deep into inside Irresistible as well, it is about finding your unique way to discover what feels good to you. And I want to empower you in finding what that is. Because sometimes it'll be right there. You ask the question and it's like, oh, I know. And other times, if it's like a uh, feels like a more high stakes situation, give yourself time, right? Give yourself time. And then if this is a whole brand new concept, be graceful, be gentle. But that inner voice is going to come alive again. That inner voice of what feels good to me, like the answer to that question is going to come alive again when you keep asking it and you genuinely give space for yourself to listen. How does that feel? So this is our second point in today's masterclass, just to keep us go back to the bullet points here. The first point was how traditional dating advice is sabotaging your fairy tale romance. The second one is the only question you need to ask yourself to guide your steps so you can fall into the arms of your true love. What feels good to me? I'm going to pause before we go to the next piece. How does that feel, you guys? I'm noticing that you guys are a little bit more shy because I'm on YouTube, but just know that like the only people who come to this channel are our people. <laughs> like I still have a very, very small little community here. So please share, please don't be shy. Like we're all in this together. We are all one. Um, but I know I used to do my lives just on a private zoom link. And I feel like you guys are a little bit more talkative in that in that, um, environment. And we're getting, we're just, you know, I'm getting used to this too. It's okay. Uh, but I do want to encourage you if you feel like saying something in the chat, please do, because it just, it just is a gift to everyone when you do. So I'll just check the chat periodically. I'm not seeing any new comments right now, but I was going to say the last bullet point was the true feminine energy traits that hook him and make him fall in love with you. Hint, it's not what you think. So with all of these, we're going to go into such depth inside Irresistible, my new course. But to kind of pull these points together, I've shared a little bit about this point already. Okay, Chantal says it feels great. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, thank you for the feedback. So I talked about being all, being your full self, right? I asked Greg, so let me just tell a quick anecdote. I asked Greg, when did you know that you like loved me? When did you know that like I was the one? And I described, I told you guys we met when I was like working on this little tiny organic farm. Um, what I didn't say just now, some of you might already know this, but it was summertime and my friend and I who were staying on this farm, we lived in a permanent tent. It was only a two week trip and I'm a a pretty girly girl. So that was a big deal for me to want to sleep outside and like live outside for two weeks. But we did. So we stayed in this like canvas tent big enough for like two single beds. My friend and I shared the tent. Um, but the bathroom, there was like a toilet that was like mostly outdoors, but with a little bit of privacy, like it was, you had to walk up a hill to get there. And so I, by the time it had been like towards the end of these two weeks, like I was as free as I think I might ever be in terms of like feeling one with nature. I probably wouldn't put myself in that environment again because I'm like a little bit high maintenance. But at the time, you know, I was 20 and it is what it is. I embraced it. I embraced the outdoor living and I would just sometimes feel a little bit too lazy to walk all the way up that hill to use the like outhouse thing. And I would just find a little private area and just pop a squat if I needed to pee. <laughs> and I like again, by the end of these two weeks, like I just was so free and so unhindered. And again, that's what made me so irresistible to Greg was the openness that I was embodying and the freedom I was embodying to just be all of me. But because, you know, we both were working on the same property. I thought that everyone did it. I thought everyone kind of just like went into the bushes and peed when they wanted to, because it was this big outdoor, beautiful property. And so anyways, long story short, it was the time for me and my friend to go home and Greg offered to drive us to the train station because he is a gentleman and he kept doing cute things like that for us and for me while I was there. So he picks us up. He lived, you know, just down the street, but he picks us up in the early morning, the day that we're leaving. He loads up the car with all of our stuff and it was still dark out. And I remember right as we were about to leave, I like, I was like, I'll be right back. And I ran off 
to go pee. Cause I was like, before we hit the road, let me go pee. And I peed in a bush and I remember his face and he was just like smiling so big. Like he, he looked like he was shocked that I was doing that. And I look at him and I was like, don't you know, like, this is my life now. Like I live outside now. I do this all the time. Like, why is this so funny? I thought you knew that. So anyways, we had a quick exchange in that moment where like, I just saw him laughing and his face was beaming. And then we, we never talked about it. Right. Again, two years goes by before we ended up seeing each other again in person. But later on, years later, I would ask him, like, when did you know I was the one? Like, when did you know you loved me and I was the one? And he tells that story. He's like, when you ran off and you peed in a bush, I was like, this is my woman. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Like, it's never what you think it's going to be. It's never. It wasn't when I was like perfectly polished and had all my shit together and like looked perfect and had no acne. And oh, like I've struggled with acne throughout the years. No, it was when I ran off and peed in the bush. She was like, I'm in love with her. So everyone is unique, right? Every man is unique and has his own things that he wants. And that wasn't like the, that wasn't my first impression. We had already bonded and had other meaningful connection, but still you know, we'd only known each other for two weeks and that's apparently when he knew. So I tell that story. I tell that story, um, to explain that the true feminine energy traits that hook him and make him fall in love with you are not what you've been taught. It's not what you think. It's not about being perfect. It's not about being super successful or having all your shit together or having your ideal body or, making all the money you want to make or having the perfect house or never getting upset or never getting triggered. Or, I mean, let's, the list goes on and on. Um, not having any more things to heal about yourself. No, it's none of those things. It's not about always being happy, always being smiling. All of these are lies. All these things are lies. What he will love though, the feminine energy he will love is feeling that you trust him within reason, right? You're not going to give your social to him on the first date. That's not the kind of trust I mean. I'm not talking about like, again, overriding what feels good to you, but trusting him in the sense of seeing him as a man. That is a feminine energy trait that he will love. Seeing him as a man in the sense of if he invites you on a date in like, picks you up and does all these things like you're, you're, you're seeing him as capable and you're seeing him as good enough that, that men are very sensitive to us feeling like they can't do something or us feeling like they're not good enough. And we, I don't think really know the depth of, um, honoring him. Yeah. The depth of which men are actually very sensitive. Super masculine men are super sensitive because it's, a pride thing. It's an ego thing, like a healthy level of ego. They need to know that they did a good job and that they're capable. If they can sense that we're criticizing the restaurant that they picked or the car that they drive, if they can sense we're criticizing those things, that's going to push him away. So not what you thought it was, was it? Like this feminine energy stuff, it's not what you thought it was going to be, is it? So it's about you being authentic, vulnerable, Okay. And, and holding him high, right? Like respecting him in that way, right? Like Carolina says, honoring him in the, in the comments. Yeah. It's not, again, I'm not saying give a stranger your social security or invite a stranger over to your house. Like, no, again, remember I've beat the dead horse at this point that what feels good to me? What do I want? Everything you do is guided by that question. And then when it comes to interacting with him and the way you see him and the way you express yourself, like see him in his highest versus seeing all the flaws that he has and honing in on all the things you think he needs to change and fix about himself. (laughs) This is all also a tip for marriage. (laughs) Um, That's an ongoing one for how we treat men. So if he feels that you accept him, trust him, appreciate him, you're golden. Like those are the energies you want to be giving him. Okay. And that also takes time. Again, this is why we're, I'm leading an entire six week course on these principles because 
I have a lot to say on every single one, and I want to give you every single tool I have to master each of these principles so you can effortlessly do it, effortlessly fall in love and attract him, okay? But this is what I'm talking about. These are the true feminine energy traits that hook him in the healthy sense of that word and make him fall in love. Does this make sense? Send me a one in the chat if this is making sense. So there's nuances here with the trusting him part when it's a brand new person that we'll go into depth on inside Irresistible. We'll go into depth about how to do that and what that looks like in examples of that. Um, yeah, because that's like that warm energy that a man just is drawn to and he feels appreciated and he feels like you're a woman that he can make happy. That's like qualifies you. If, if, if he thinks that you are a woman that he can make happy, that qualifies you. That sets you apart. If he's unclear on whether or not he can make you happy, he's going to be unclear about you. Okay. Powerful, right? So actually one of your comments, I, I'm recognizing a woman here at a conversation we had recently. Um, I'll keep it anonymous, but she's a client. But I've had this conversation with a couple different clients this past week where I was like, I want to, I'm going to put this inside the irresistible course too. It's something that I've taught before, but I'm ready again to just amplify it. And that is with this whole piece of how we treat men as we're dating and as we're going on dates with knowing now that they need to feel like you trust them. They need to feel like you see them as capable. They need to feel like they're good enough for you and that you accept him. You appreciate him. All those things. That's what men need to know and feel right. One of the dating guidelines that I have taught in the past, um, but again, can feel like a rule and that's why I'm sort of surrendering it, but it's know your vision and then make sure as you're dating that he fits, that he fits your vision. We're, we're graduating from that way of thinking about it and instead saying, yeah, know your vision and let him rise to meet you. That's the like more evolved version of it. That's the true way that I've been trying to teach it, but I'm just going to stand more deeply in that now is let's say your vision is to be nomadic, or let's say your vision is to, I don't know, move to another country or be a stay at home mom, or like, let's just say you have a dream for the lifestyle that you want to have with your man and you're currently single. And then because, you know, me and other coaches are all like, you know, claim what you want, claim what you want. On accident, what happens is you go on these, on these dates and you're like seen through the lens of what you're manifesting in your lifestyle. And you're like, you're going on these dates, you're looking on the apps and you're like, oh, he doesn't say on here that he wants nomadic lifestyle. Mm, not worth my time. I'm not going to go on that date. He looks like he has a location-based job or a location-based company. Like he's not going to be able to be nomadic. Next do we see where we're going with this? Not even giving him the chance to prove that he can make you happy. And then you're sabotaging. So this is where like the guideline of hold your vision is getting misinterpreted. And then women are cutting themselves off from love. And that's why I'm like, oh God, oh no, it happened again. So instead, I want you as you're dating to just reveal what you're so excited about and what you love and what's going to make you so happy and what you're, what you're wanting to manifest and create, just share, just share, let him be in his masculine energy, which is he's going to know, can I provide this or not? He's going to know, do I want to provide this or not? Let him come up with all of that versus you sitting there being like, so I want this, 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 and this, is that something that you want to, <laughs> I want this, this, and this, and this, is that something that you can do. <laughs> That's the vibe we're going to let go of. That's the vibe we're going to let go of. Let him feel your whole heart. Let him feel your vision. Let him see how happy your vision makes you. And then project, you get to project the energy that he can do that if he wants to. Do we get this? Very, very, very different approach where I, I don't really see a whole lot of coaches teaching it this way. Um, 
And that is the feminine way. Like you're in your desire, you're sharing your heart, you're expressing yourself and you are leaning back. You're not like sitting there with your job application being like, does he check this box, this box, this, this box, this box, right? You're not doing that. You're not going like, so is that something that you can achieve in six months? Like, do we think you can do that? We're not, like, we're not in this condescending, judgmental, analytical place. No, we're sharing. We're being ourselves. We're in our feelings. We're sharing what lights us up. And then we witness and we see how he shows up, right? We, we wait. We allow. And my story, again, is a perfect example of that. If I had been, when Greg and I first got together, if I had been like, I'm going to manifest a French guy and then he's going to leave his country for me. He's going to come to the US and then he's going to start a business here and he's going to support me as I start my business and blah, 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 blah. Like if I had all that planned out and then Greg and I met and I was like, so would you ever move to the US? Would you ever do that? Like I would have freaked him out probably. And he would have been like, maybe. And I would, and if I was following that kind of rigid advice, I would have been like, well, he said, maybe he didn't say yes. So next close the door on that. Instead, I shared who I was. We essentially fell in love without trying. And then I shared what I wanted and he rose to the occasion, right? He rose to the occasion, not because he had predetermined that he wanted to move to the US and wanted to immigrate here. No, that, he had no idea he was ever going to do that. But it was inspired by me. It was inspired by me. You have the power, 100% you have the power to inspire your man. So this is where inside Irresistible, we're going to be shedding some of the inauthentic criteria that you've possibly been holding as you date and getting to the heart of what genuinely matters. Do we see that? I'm really glad that I spent the time. This is a big point I wanted to illustrate here. And we'll wrap up soon. I want to see if you guys have any questions in the chat. Um, but this is a really, really important point. If I had sat there and interviewed him and asked him those yes or no questions and then made my decision based off his answers, we wouldn't have ever gotten together. <laughs> And I'd probably be on my seventh or 10th relationship by now <laughs> after, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so instead it's stay true to you, live your best life and let him rise to meet you and see, right? But putting all this pressure up front on like, he's got to want the same exact number of kids as me right now. He's got to, he's got to want to like do this, this, and this by this time it's, it is great to ask in general what his values are and in general find out what he's looking for, but let's let's be open-minded. Let's surrender some of that. And instead, you be bold in your vision. You be bold in your vision. You be all of you. You live your best life. Did we get this? I'm turning 31 this month. Someone just said, how old are you? Yay. 31, May 23rd. Here we go. <laughs> so I want to answer any questions you guys might have. I love how Annabelle commented, yes, let him rise. Yeah, let him rise. See him as capable. Because it's like you can't know what you don't know. So when something's in your blind spot, you don't know that you don't know it, that it's there, right? Like it's in your blind spot. So when a man has not met his queen yet, he he's going off of what he knows, right? He's basing his future, his plans, his goals off of what he knows. So until he meets you, you're in his blind spot. I love this way of describing it. Until he meets you and gets to see your whole magnetic, beautiful, unique energy and essence, he you're in his blind spot. So he might have a plan of what he thinks his life is going to be. And he's like just doing the best he can with what he has and what he knows. But then you show up, you come out of his blind spot into front, front and center. And he's like, Oh, and sometimes, and I'm not saying that for every single man, he's going to 
completely ditch his current plan and create a new one. I'm just saying that could happen. That's what happened with us. Like Greg was about to buy a house in the middle of nowhere and like just be a hermit, basically. <laughs> he knew he wanted a wife. And when I asked him, what were you looking for? He's like, you have everything that I knew I wanted. So I'm like, he knew he was manifesting, so to speak. But until he found me, he was going to like live there. And now it makes no sense for us to live there. We would never live there together. We would maybe have like a vacation house, but it's like together, our life is coming into vision together. Like you're here to create a life with your person. So let's not rule people out with these like obsessive qualifications. Give space for your lives to evolve together. Give space for him to rise to meet you because the masculine energy is the provider. Not to say you don't also make money. It's not that he's the sole provider unless that's what you're looking for, but he provides the conditions for you to be happy. He wants to add add to your happiness. He wants to source your happiness. So let him know how to do that. And he will shift in the ways he needs to. Right? How do we feel? Tell me what you guys are thinking and feeling in the chat. And I'm so excited to have you guys inside Irresistible. Here is the link again to save your spot. Make sure you save your spot while the pre-sale pricing is available. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will see I have a really beautiful payment plan option as well. Um, Annabelle says, give space for your energies to evolve together. Ooh, that's juicy. Yes, you're here to co-create. And I don't care how old you are and how old you're, the kind of man you're looking for is either. The age thing, like, again, don't limit him. I was talking to a woman who was, you know, she's, I think she's in her fifties and she was talking about how she'll probably end up with someone who's in, who's retired. And she, then she was putting limitations on what he could provide if he's retired. And I'm like, men are powerful. Men will like men will do anything for what they want. And if you're what he wants, like hold him high, see him as capable you know, see men in general as capable. That's a, that if you do that alone from this live stream, your whole life will change. <laughs> see men as capable. So I shared a lot of golden nuggets today. And I promise you, if you genuinely embody them and you let go of all the other nonsense, that's like clogging your field and getting you on your head. If you just do what I, what I shared in today's masterclass, you will attract your fairy tale romance quickly in perfect divine timing. And it will be fun. It will be energizing. It will be magical. And if you're ready to be held through a process to master each of these principles that I shared today, then I would love to have you inside Irresistible, my live course. Like I said, pre-sale ends soon, very, very soon, like within days, the pre-sale pricing ends and the price will go up. Um, and then we start soon as well. So click the link, um, in the description to save your spot. And I can't wait to support you. Um, yeah, I'm seeing Joe says, Oh my God, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I'll hang on for one more minute to see if there's any other juicy comments coming through. Um, yeah, click the link to save your spot. We start very, very soon. Um, for some of you in my other programs, I've sent you guys um, either a coupon code or I've. if you're in Ravishing Love, Irresistible is included in that. Um, but for everyone else, if you have any questions, you can email me at info at chelsearoses.com. Send me an email if you have any questions about the course. Um, and I'm so excited to have you. I'm so excited to support you. This is your permission slip to know that you are perfectly made for your person. You are more than enough. You are magnetic already. And you get to trust yourself. You get to come into your body and you get to follow the feminine path to attracting love, which is nonlinear. It's spiritual. It's fun. And 
this is really for the women who are wanting that fairy tale romance. So I can't wait to support you guys. Annabelle says, thank you so much for sharing your time and energy. I appreciate you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you want to be notified next time I go live, I would love for you to hit subscribe. If you're new here and you enjoyed this, hit subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be creating a lot of content for you guys on YouTube. It's my favorite place to be. And I love you all so much and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.